I have a VB project here which has a text box named TXT my number and the user enters a value into it. The default is 15. Then a button that's, that gets that number and another button that doubles the number. Let's look at the code for those. The code for the get number button, I've declared a variable as type double and then I've gotten the text from the text box and convert it to a double value and assigned it to that variable XYZ. And then I simply have a message box showing that I've assigned that value to XYZ. In the BTN double number button script, again I'm declaring a variable XYZ as double. I'm taking that value, multiplying it by 2, and reassigning it back to that value. And then showing that the number doubled is whatever the value of XYZ is, and I doubled XYZ as my title. So let's just go ahead and run this so you can see what happens here. So here's my program. I've got 15. I'm going to click get number. And so let's put 15 into XYZ. And then I'm going to double that number. And I'm told the number doubled is 0. So let's look at what's going on there and why that is. In the get number button, I have a variable dim, uh, XYZ that I'm dimming as double. This is called a local variable. It's a variable that is declared within a procedure. That's a local variable. It's local to that procedure. Here's the problem. I'm declaring the variable. I'm setting a value to it. And then I'm using that variable in a message box. And then it hits the end sub and that procedure is done. And when that procedure finishes, that variable that was put aside in memory basically no longer exists that memory location is released for future use. So in the next sub-procedure, when I'm clicking the double number button, I'm declaring another variable, also named XYZ. It's actually a different variable from this XYZ that has a local value or local shelf life. And when I'm saying XYZ equals XYZ times 2, the value of XYZ is 0 because I haven't declared it as anything, or initialized it as anything. So XYZ equals 0 times 2, which is 0, and then my message box is showing a value of the number doubled is 0. So the way we get around that is to use class level variables. Class level variables have a lifespan that exists for the entire program. What I'm going to do is comment out both of these values as far as declaring our XYZ as a double, so those are no longer local variables. And I'm going to declare instead XYZ outside of my sub procedure. So dim XYZ as double. And so that is outside of each of these sub procedures and that now becomes what we call a class level variable. It exists for the entire duration that this class exists rather than just the sub-procedure. As a result, whenever I'm referring to XYZ in a sub-procedure, it's referring to this value, that the class level value. So now if we run our program, and I choose get number, I'm told the number is 15, and if I choose double number, the number doubled is 30. So both sub-procedures are referencing that same variable in memory. By the way, if I declare this as double here and run my program, number is 15, the number doubled is 0. And the reason being is we can have a local variable that is the same name as a class level variable. And if it's declared locally, any reference to it in that subprocedure will be the local variable and not the class level. So when I'm dimming XYZ as double here, XYZ is referring to this XYZ and not the XYZ that is class level, which was where the number was put when we got the number. Same thing happens if I'm declaring XYZ as a local variable in my get number. When I get the number, it's going to go into the local XYZ and not the class level XYZ. But when I double the number, it's going to get the class level, which is going to be 0, because we've never placed a number into it. Just to demonstrate that, 
So I'm going to get the number. I'm told the number is 15. I'm going to double the number, and I'm told it's zero. So it, this is a good recommendation. I wouldn't use the same variable names that are locally declared as system declared. And what a lot of people will do when they have a system uh, variable is they might start out with the letter G for global. System variables are also known as called global. So they might begin a name with the letter G, or some people use the letter S for system variable, um, or C for class level variable. You don't have to do that. I usually use the letter G a lot of times, um, but also a lot of times do not bother using that kind of notation. Here's the same problem in C sharp. Uh, same exact form. Uh, if we look at the code for the get number and double number, basically doing the same thing we did earlier on declaring a local variable, XYZ as type double, assigning a value and showing it in the message box. And then for the double number button, declaring a local variable, doubling it, and showing it in a message box. If you look closely here, see there's a little squiggly underneath XYZ. Because C sharp is saying, okay, you've declared a local variable here, but you've assigned it no value, and now you're trying to double something that has no value and doesn't know how to respond to that. In VB, what was happening was a variable that's declared in which we've assigned no initial value, if it's numeric, automatically defaults to zero. C sharp doesn't do that. And so rather than this being zero, it's simply saying it's uninitialized. And assigned. Um, I'm going to do the same thing we did in VB by commenting those out. And I want to declare XYZ as a class level variable. So both of these procedures can refer to that same variable. And in C sharp, we're going to declare our class level variables above the public form. So it's, it's within the class, but it's outside of any procedures. And so I'll just type in double x, y, z, semicolon. And now if we look at our code, there's no more squiggly because x, y, z, uh, it's recognizing that x, y, z is a, is a class level variable, and therefore it's assuming it has a value. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea to come up here and initialize it as zero initially because when we get the click the get number button, it's going to take XYZ and reset its value to whatever the text is uh, in our text box. And so when we click the double number button, it will no longer be zero, it will be whatever value is in that text box. Let me go ahead and run this. I get number, the number is 15, and when I double the number, the value is 30. Once again, as I showed you in the DB section that if we make this a local variable with the same name and try to run this it tells me the number is 15 but if I try to double that number it's referring to the system variable or the class of a variable which is 0 and we double 0 we still get 0 so again you want to try to avoid using the same name for both your class level and your local variables so the obvious question is, why not just declare all our variables as class level variables and forget the local variables? Well, the reason is, when we declare everything as class level, though that is using up memory throughout the entire duration of our application. And it's not good memory management. Now, granted, today our amounts of memory in our computers is much greater than we used to have years ago, um, but it still is considered kind of bad programming practice. We really want to use as much memory as we need to, uh, especially when we have multiple applications running simultaneously. Um, so we only use class level variables if they're going to be utilized by more than one sub procedure. Otherwise, you want to declare them as local variables.